Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Kevin, and I am already energized. I've been chatting for what appears to be, I, I think the Zoom clock is lying, but we've already been chatting for 10 minutes. I've been, <laughs> I've had the great pleasure of conversing so far with, again, with Kenei Iloanyosi. Did I get that last yes. name right again? Iloanyosi. Yes. You got it right, um, man, this time. Awesome. 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 <laughs> Kenei is an author, career coach, and speaker who guides people to discover their purpose and find their career sweet spot. His books, Finding Your Sweet Spot, DNA of Talent, and Put Your Purpose to Work have helped thousands of people live out their purpose in the work that they do. Kenei has been here once before. We had an excellent conversation when I was thinking about who I wanted to talk to again in 2023. He was one of the first names that came to mind. Thank you. I'm so glad to have you back. Thank you for being here and thank you for continuing the conversation. It's already been great. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks. Good to be back. Good to be be back. Good, good, good. So we were we we just jumped right in and started talking about just how our how our months and weeks and days and the new year has been going since we last chatted. And the conversation that just already like is off the runway and is at cruising altitude, 30,000 feet. And we got into something that I that's been a very high, high on my mind subject. And that's definitions of introversion and extroversion as it pertains to myself personally and professionally, as it pertains to this particular podcast and how how to define it. Because for me, I know that I have had a, a self-definition of myself as an introvert for a long time. And people listening to this podcast will probably you know, scoff at that. because, <laughs> But, but that, that's, that's, that's exactly my point. Yeah. I, I am in, in my experiences, especially through this podcast, I've had new light shown on how I've defined those terms, both for myself and for the world around me. And you started speaking very, I thought, very eloquently and very clearly and cleanly right to the heart of that. And so I wanted to pick that conversation up with the record button yep. <laughs> lit up and ask you about the proper definitions of introversion and extroversion and how we might be misdefining them here and there in our, especially in our professional lives. Yeah. Yeah. So unfortunately, most people when they hear the term extrovert or introvert, they think about outgoing or not outgoing. You know, extroverts are outgoing. They like being around people. Introverts just want to work in a room. They don't like people. Feed me, set, put the food on, under the door. Get away from <laughs> me. That is, you know, that, that is so wrong. It, it's just, it's, it's, it actually, it's one of the things that, that, that I don't well, I can say this on your podcast. It pisses me off, you know, because I often work with people who say they are trying to get over their introversion. Introversion is not a sickness. It's not a disease. It's not something you should get over. It is how you are wired. And so in, it's in the purest definition of introversion and extroversion, extroversion simply means that you are energized by people interaction, that you gain energy from that introversion means that you lose energy by people interaction and you gain energy by and recharge you know able to recharge by being alone mm -hmm. that's that's the pure form of introversion extroversion the extrovert will need time to you know they, they can enjoy being alone and rest and recharge but at the end of the day when an extrovert has had a lot of interaction with people, they are physically tired, but they're emotionally emotionally charged and like, yeah, I'm ready to do this again tomorrow. <laughs> Introvert, as they interact with people through the day, their energy is depleting. So they're physically tired at the end of the day, they're emotionally drained, and they recharge emotionally on their own. So for most people, the mistake people make is replacing shyness for introversion. So they see someone who is shy, who's sort of withdrawn, mm. and they say the person is an introvert. No, the person is shy. Shyness is a social disorder. And you can have a shy extrovert who mm. wants to be around people, but again, there's just that feeling of awkwardness of like, man, I, I don't really... I don't know if they're judging me. There are so many thoughts around shyness. And you can have an outgoing introvert. My wife is an outgoing introvert. When she's around people, she can even be the life of the party. <laughs> but 
She has a span of like four hours. <laughs> and it's your job to keep track of that and to get her out of the party yeah. when she gets down to the down to oh, yeah. When she gets done, you know, she, she starts to give me the warning. Hey, three hours, three and a half. <laughs> Once she hits that mark, she's out. She's out. <laughs> you know, and if I don't, if I don't make a move, she'll go sit in the car. You know, she's, that, she, she's developed techniques for how because yeah. she understands herself very well. And she doesn't push herself beyond those boundaries because she's experienced very likely what has happened when she's allowed her boundaries to go to get crossed in that way. And that's I, I love I love that. I love that. I, I'm like in my in my heart of hearts. I like I feel like I'm friends with your wife now because like that that speaks to me directly where it's like I've got my gauges. I've got my warning lights. I know what to do if I get too close to empty. I'll just yeah. remove myself from the situation. <laughs> that's, that's, that's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And it is important for us to to know where we fit. And then we have a third category that most people don't even talk about. We call them the ambiverts. So people who are part introvert, part extrovert, they fall somewhere in the middle. And so for them, for for ambiverts, it's it's we tell them in in especially when it comes to work and relationships, know the environments that tap into your introvert side the the environments that deplete your energy and know the environments that you know energize you and you mm. really have to be careful so that mm. you apply yourself well and, and and i mean ambiverts have they can have the best of both worlds or the worst of both worlds it's one of those things that they really have to do more introspection than pure extroverts and pure introverts mm. that makes a lot of sense because yeah with the with the traditionally defined introversion and extroversion, you have some very clear, some very clear definitions, some very clear boundaries. Whereas I, I imagine falling in, into, into ambivert, which is a term I hadn't, if I've encountered it before, I don't remember. I love that. That's going into my dictionary immediately. Yeah. You have to, you basically, you don't get the luxury of those more, those harder defined rules. And so you basically, you have to navigate every situation as if it could go either way, which again, yeah. it does, it does put a heavier burden of introspection and processing and boundary establishing and holding on that person. So you get the flexibility and the adaptability with everything that comes with it, <laughs> all of yes. the opportunities and all of the dangers that come with that. Yes. And you just, you, you use a very a key term, the adaptability mm -hmm. in a work setting. Ambiverts are useful. They, I mean, they're, they're critical in a team because the ambivert can speak the language of the introvert or mm. and can speak the language of the extrovert. And sometimes pure introverts and extroverts don't necessarily understand each other. Mm -hmm. And so the ambivert on a team is sort of the middle link. They can explain the introvert to the extrovert and they can explain the extrovert to the introvert. And they are very, very good at helping keep that team strong and cohesive and mm -hmm. moving towards their goal. I really love that. I love thinking of that way too. Because as, as you began talking, I was thinking of an ambivert as sort of like a, a skeleton key for for team dynamics, because of that uh, that ability to translate. I think the, tra the translation is, is I, I feel like that's the best way to describe it. Because when you have these these different types of people in this particular way, especially when you have like you know kind of on poles where you have like yeah. introversion and extroversion, you have sort of like a spectrum of where people might fall. Mm -hmm. There, if there's a gap in the middle, it can often be very difficult to have the effective communication that is quite frankly just required in order to really like have an effective team and to grow and be successful in all your endeavors, but especially yeah. in a work environment where you've already got people from various walks of life, various life experiences, various education levels and amounts and types and various work experiences. And so you have all these dynamic people, which is what you want out of pretty much all the time out of a team. You yeah. want that dynamism. But yeah. then you want to make sure that that communication gap is filled with the right people who have the right skills and the right ability to help everybody talk to each other. And I love I love thinking of ambiverts as that translator who speaks who speaks everyone's language well enough to make sure yeah. that everyone is on the same page and yeah. understands each other. And that's that is exactly what we call them in, in my career coaching world with with the assessments I use, the Highlands Ability Battery. They mm. are tra translators for people on the opposite sides of the spectrum, because often, you know, <laughs> I don't know if you've ever heard this humorous, no, no, this is talking about specialists and generalists, but it can also relate to extroverts and introverts. But they say the generalist is someone who knows 
a little about everything. And the, ex the, the specialist is someone who knows everything about nothing. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yes, yes. You, you need the translator in the middle to sort of help the, the poles understand each other. And in, in a work setting, it's, up, it's actually easier for an extrovert to function. It's not optimal. It's not mm -hmm. advised. But it's easier for an extrovert to function in a role suited for an introvert than for an introvert to function mm. in a role suited for an extrovert. Okay, that makes sense. Because, I mean, with with introverts, there are just certain ways about them that once their energy is, once their energy is depleted, I mean, the risk of a blow up, I mean, there's just, there's just so many things that can go wrong. Uh, yeah. And so often when I work with people, they, they may find that the issues they're having at work with their colleagues is the fact that they are introverts in an extrovert's role. Mm -hmm. Say yeah, you're an introvert, but you're in a sales role and it's not even specialized selling. It's a, it's, it's the type of sales that puts you out front all the time and People are wondering like, man, okay, why is he not that friendly? Or why is she not that friendly? Is he not a morning person? Is she, what, mm. what's going on? Yeah. Um, but they don't understand that that introvert just has this bandwidth that they can tolerate of people interaction. And typically what we advise them to do is don't reach your threshold, get to a point. Maybe if you, if you know your threshold is like three hours, then, every hour and a half when you still have some juice in the tank find time alone for like 15 minutes yeah you know boost that threshold again come back but often in the workplace depending on what you do it's not possible you know so that that that, that and, and it's not with career coaching for work specifically you are not looking at the the that personality in isolation there are right. other things that come into, you know, come in, you know, come, come to bear on whether you're an extrovert or an introvert. Are you an, are you a specialist introvert or a specialist extrovert who's got mm -hmm. like you know special high special relations theory where you're able to see the big picture? You like to work hands on. There's so many things that factor into helping this person really maximize that personality in the work they do. And this is exactly why, well, it, it, it's exactly, it's, it's at the heart of, it's not, it's far from the only reason, but I feel like it's right at the heart of why coaches and coaching are so, 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 so valuable and are increasingly recognized as such because, and this is a word that, <clears throat> this is a word that comes up in so many of my conversations, fit. Fit is something that all, co every single coach I've spoken to has high on their list of, it's really important, whether, when they're taking their own clients. How they're working with how they're working with their clients and building teams, how they're coaching executives to climb a ladder, how they're coaching yep. people through a career change, anything. It's fit is so important. And it's because of all those factors that do need to be considered in order to understand whether or not someone's in the right place, in the right way to exactly. serve not only themselves, but to serve the team and the company that they that they're that they're in with. And yeah, and it, the, the way that you describe it. It, I think it's a per, a perfect encapsulation of what's so valuable, so valuable about a coach. Because again, you do a lot of translation work yourself. You're yeah. evaluating and like looking at the shape of things and understanding people with very clear frameworks. And so, and you can also help that understanding translate to the people who are doing the hiring, to the people yeah. who are doing, who are in charge of the team building, who have the leadership skills to do that and the things that they need to know about their people and how they'll fit in the team. Yeah. And it's just, I fit it constantly comes up and it's just so such an important three letter word, a tiny little word that carries a lot, a lot of weight. <laughs> it's, it, it is huge because for a lot of people, that is the problem. Mm. They, you know, it's like trying to fit square peg into a round hole. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, you can push it in, you can use a hammer, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you can get in there. <laughs> it, it'll get in there, but it will, all, it will always be, wonky yeah it will always be wonky and the truth about it that right fit or what i call your career sweet spot 
mm -hmm. is available to everyone if they just spent the time, you know, learning more about themselves, learning the things that make, you know, you know how they're wired in terms of their natural abilities, their personality, time frame orientation. There are a number of things that we look at and we now start to sort of like a, a puzzle, mm -hmm. you know, and you now start to play with it. It's, 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 it's huge. And I'm still working on, on this write up on the investment of coaching. Mm. It is not an ex coaching is not an expense. The investment, um, you know, I, I wrote, I said something on LinkedIn not too long ago. Maybe I think it was last week. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line or with a coach. <laughs> I like that. I like that. It's good <laughs> because the coach is outside of you and they're simply teaching you how to look deeper within and analyze all these opportunities you have on the outside, but they're helping you make sense of how what you have on the inside connects with what you're seeing or looking for on the outside. You know, and that's how the fit happens. Not every opportunity is for not, not every opportunity is for for you. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And it's important to be able to acknowledge that. It's like it's a lot of times people will people will look at a lot of their relationships in their life as arrival points where it's like, ah, I've done it. I've I've arrived at the the friendship I need, the partnership I need, the job that I need. Everything's perfect. It's like one thing that I think gets overlooked about the entire concept of fit is that fit's not like you don't just fit into the spot. You don't find it and shape it and get in there and then you're done. Mm. That allows you to then grow in ways that you might never have thought possible. It's not okay. an end point. It's an opening up. And so it's, it's, it's in, a, in an encouraging way and like a really yeah. like you, you should be enthusiastic. And, I'm, and it might be a little scary. It could be scary because when you're when you're in the right place, the right time with the right people and you found a fit, the power and possibility in, inherent in that is it could be a little scary. And a lot of people, like when you experience it for the first time, it'll, it'll kind of knock you back a little bit. You almost feel a little bit awed by how right everything feels. It, it might spook you a little bit, but but trust us, that's it's, it's supposed to feel that way. It can feel that way. It's meant to feel that way. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm getting paid to do this. Seriously? <laughs> right? Uh, like, yeah, because you are wired to do this easily. But when I use the term easily, I'm not saying you will not work hard, but what is difficult tasking work? What is sort of, I don't use the term drudgery, but what is really hard for people to you or to someone who's got the right, for whom it's the right fit, they're sort of fish in water. They're like fish in water. I was having a conversation, at, I think it was dinner over the weekend and this guy is in finance. He is like a director of finance and top company, but he's, he's a natural salesperson. He's a natural salesperson. He was telling me that in the last two years, he's brought in the most sales to his company. But unfortunately, every time he gets a recruiter, they bring him finance positions, CFO positions. Hmm. You know, the, the struggle is, I love to sell. It's It comes to me naturally. I do it well because I'm not selling. I'm just introducing a product to you that will add value or help you. And the way he does it, mm -hmm. it's, you know, you don't think of him as, a, you know, like the stereotypical salesperson. It's all around relationship building. Mm -hmm. But he has a background in finance. I mean, he's good with numbers, but what really stands out is solving problems for people which really makes them buy whatever it is he's selling yeah. and so very, again very servant oriented you know and, and and so in the back and forth i was like well um, you've been interviewing for all these cfo positions which you really don't want but okay yeah, there, there, there's going to be more money but what you should look for is a position where you are primarily selling which comes naturally to you and you're good at connecting people. But what you're selling is a product or service that has to do with finances. So you, you yeah. know, and you can talk the finance lingo, 
but man, you are you are an ace at selling. And so you're merging to the two, and you're like, wow. Yeah. Wow. It sounds so simple when you say it, but then but we we never we don't think of this. Yeah. We get we we like I I'm imagining this person who just got on the path that allowed his career to grow and ended up however it happened through education, through influence, through parents or mentors or friends, through aptitude as well, just found his has found himself on this path of being in finance and has progressed along that path due to being again good with numbers. Mm -hmm. And that that word goods doing a lot of work cuz goods I mean not to put too fine a point on it but goods not great. And obviously like you can be successful. Yeah. And still might be where you want to be. You can yeah. still be like like feeling that lack of fit. It's not quite right. And there are a lot of skills that we acquire on our road forward yeah. that are meant to serve us in our forward momentum and don't necessarily serve our desire for fit and to do to to execute on our passions and to really live our our most our our to live out our best fit professionally. Yeah. And it's such an interesting like it, we get so far down those roads that you lay it out and again once again where a coach is just priceless is the ability to see to see and to say mm -hmm. that relatively simple thing like you laid it out very clearly it's clear as day to me of course it's not my life so of course it's clear as day to me <laughs> i'm looking at this i'm looking at the speck in somebody else's eye you gotta yeah. work on the log in my own eyes so to speak but it's and you get down these roads and you get in these trenches and it's there are certain things certain obvious things that are just borderline impossible to see without the perspective of someone who knows what to look for cares about you professionally and that's one thing coaches are great at they understand how to care about someone which is yeah. what allows them to see what needs to be seen and to say what needs to be said and that's again why you identify it not as an expense but as an investment coaching is an investment and put in those terms uh, it pays you off tenfold a oh. hundredfold a thousandfold it's it's really it's it, it's incalculable yeah. what a what a good coach at the right moment will do for your life personally and professionally and that's a it's a great example of exactly the kind of the kind of guidance a coach provides yeah it's 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 invaluable what a coach can do because you are i mean like you you you, you said it so well you are in the trenches the mm. coach is you know the, the coach's trench is spending time helping people see mm -hmm. a bigger picture. And they're looking at it from the outside in. The person they're working with is often looking from the inside out mm -hmm. and it's a limited view. So the coach helps expand their vision and reorganizes things for them. Um, showing people that, okay, you're good at this, but you've actually been working in your skills not your natural abilities, not your personality. Mm. And so when you when you are successful purely in your skills, yeah, you're making good money, you have a good position, but you are unfulfilled. It's it's mm -hmm. just, I'm sorry, it's, it's just the truth. Because your skills function from the inside out. Your natural abilities, your personality, they those things function from the outside in. So mm -hmm. you, you should lead your career, your career search based on using those things that come naturally to you, your natural abilities, and then your skills should come behind and mm -hmm. support. Mm -hmm. For most people there, natural abilities don't even factor in. They're just focused on, okay, I've learned the numbers. I've learned, you know, effective communication skills. I've learned how to manage people, skills that are useful, but your natural abilities don't come to play. Yeah, it's very resume oriented thinking. So I'm imagining it's it's a lot easier to put skills into single sentences, short yeah. paragraphs that work very well on a resume, fit it into a cover letter. It's much it's much easier to fit it there. And so it fits it fits a conveniently shaped structure that allows us to kind of lean on it maybe a little bit too much. It's much harder to put forward that natural ability in a way that is representative of you and appealing yeah. to a potential a potential you know HR personnel or someone who's looking to hire it's yeah. it's it's tricky and it's it's a little bit more work and again it's one of those things where it's like you don't really know how to do it or don't understand where you might start an ideal place for a coach to come in to tell you like here's how you can put this part of yourself forward and like you were talking with the finance guy I was like here's what your ideal thing is it's actually a merging of the skills that you've acquired and your natural ability and here's what that could look like and just gave him like an example just a conversational example and just yeah. you know 
it sounds like he kind of had to take a breath and like, oh, I never and quite thought of that way before. That, <laughs> the funny thing is that when I said it, immediately he knew the type of job. He was like, oh, wow. Huh? Like, yeah. You know, <laughs> when, when the light goes off, all of a sudden you can see. <laughs> Who... <laughs> yeah. I just I just looked up at the clock. We have been on 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 the podcast. We've already been chatting for over 25 minutes. We've already been talking wow. for getting close to 40 now. Wow. I'm unsurprised because I, just like last time, once we got going, it, it's just, it was amazing. <laughs> before I, I, I should let you go. But before yeah. I do, I want to make sure that you get a chance to just tell the audience anything like what's one thing that you're excited about in 2023 where can people find out more about you just like you know learn more about who you are what you do how you do it where yeah. can people connect with you if you like to you know if you're very active on linkedin and you like to dm people there if you have a like a free course or a form how do you how how do you like to meet people for the first time all of those things yeah <laughs> well my website is talentrevolution.me mm -hmm. talentrevolution.me I am on LinkedIn, really. That's my business platform. And so people can reach out. I, I always reject the people that want to connect with me, but they really want to sell me their mm. 10X coaching platform. But if you, <laughs> you know, if you reach yeah. out on LinkedIn and put in the, the additional notes that you listen to this uh, podcast, I'll be more than happy to connect with you and chat with you. Um, people who want to engage in a coaching relationship feel free to reach out it's you know we'll, we'll, you get a 30 minute free consultation because again mm -hmm. talking about fit we have to make sure that i am the right fit for them okay because i'm not the right fit for everybody uh, mm -hmm. so we have to make sure that i'm the right fit for them whether i am the right fit or not there will still be some value that they get out of the conversation and even helping them think about the type of coach they need. If I'm not the right person, hopefully I'll be able to point them in, you know, the right direction. Until you know, you you can do that. Reach out to me. There's there's a contact button on my website. My books are out there. My latest book is this: Put Your Purpose to Work. You can get that on on Amazon. And this, I'm actually writing an article on it right right now. This I was writing before we started, but again, it's helping you understand that. Your work should be an expression of your purpose, and so mm -hmm. how do you know? How do you go 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 through all that? How do you go about understanding your purpose and figuring out how that relates to work and helping it manifest at work? So that quite a bit one has to do in twenty twenty three. I am excited about you know the new coaching relationships that are starting and just just you know just the things that we have to do this year pretty excited pretty excited there's a lot of good work to be done and we're yeah. we're engaged in it it feels good it feels really good and that's, I, I liked your advice about the, uh, the linkedin connection too you get like well, i think it's 300 characters you get when you when you reach up for a connection request you get a very short amount of character well it seems very short you can yeah, say a lot that time take advantage of that 300 characters you can you can express a world of desire and need and a, really a world of yourself encapsulated. So take advantage of those 300 characters. You never know if those are going to be the ones that start the conversation here, which leads to a conversation later on, mm -hmm. which leads to the fit you've been looking for maybe your entire life. And it could just start with, you know, 300 little characters and a little connect with on LinkedIn. You never know. <laughs> that, is, that is true. That is true. A lot yeah, of I, it, a lot of business has come, come. I mean, even in my other businesses that I had in the past, LinkedIn has been valuable if you know you can provide value to someone or just mm. asking a question that triggers a relationship, you never know what that can lead to. And so it's it's again for business professionals, that's that's a good place to to connect. I don't do marketing. I mean, I've stopped marketing on Facebook and Instagram and all those places because my clients young executives who are making a good income but unfulfilled in their jobs are not really doing business they're not looking for business relationships on facebook or instagram for them it's all about linkedin so yeah. that's where i am it's really has it's deepened as a as a relationship platform as you know because it's as opposed to just being considered I've, for the longest time it was just like a resume like an interactive online resume or a resume on steroids or whatever yeah. whatever people would call it but it really has deepened in its ability to connect people and to build relationships yeah. as a platform in a way that is aligned with professional goals. Yeah, It's really, yeah, I've, 
I've I've expounded on the virtues of LinkedIn here before. I'm certain I will again. But yes, it is a great place to to grow yourself professionally and yep. meet the people who are going to help you on that journey and the people that you can help on that journey too. Remember, it's a it's a relationship. It's, it's a two-way two street. Yeah. 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 So I just thank thank you, thank you, thank you for coming on. This hey, has been thanks for having I, me back. This, this has been, been even a pleasure. Better than I remembered. And I remembered it pretty fondly. <laughs> so I'm probably, I'm very likely going to be back in your in your LinkedIn DMs in, you know, maybe like three to six months. And we'll do like a mid a mid-year, maybe like a summer check-in or a late spring check-in and just see anytime, all the anytime. good stuff that's come out. Okay. Anytime. Um, yes, anytime. anytime. Thank you so much to the audience too. I mean, if you've been listening to this, you know, you know what it's all about do yourself a favor and reach out <laughs> like we just asked you to. You won't be sorry. And here on the podcast, we will have the pleasure of speaking to you again very soon.